QuickBooks Online 2023 Bank Rules Split into two accounts and classes Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023 Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our bank feeds practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using incognito or another browser to open the sample company. You could open incognito if using Google Chrome by selecting three dots in the browser incognito window, typing into the search engine QuickBooks Online test drive. We're using the sample company to compare the accounting view, the one the bank feeds practice file is in, and the business view, the one the sample company is in. You can toggle between the two views by going to the, the cog up top and switch the view down below. Let's open up some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. And then we're gonna do it again. Do it again, yes, duplicate it again. Tab into the middle, opening up the reports on the left to get one of those favorite reports that we all know, the balance sheet report. You know that one, everybody loves it. By the way, if you're on the, the business view, the reports are in the business overview and then the reports on the left hand side so you know where that stuff is on that one tab into the right we're going to the reports on the left opening up the income statement just as famous as the balance sheet just as well known closing the hand boogie let's change the range from 010122 tab 123122 tab running, 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 running refreshing tabbing middle tabbing closing the boogering and then ranging the changing 010122 tab 123122 tab running to refreshing and then tab into the left so we can open up the bank feeds which is currently of course our focus at this time banking tab on the left and then banking tab up top if you're in the business view by the way where are the bank feeds well they're under the bookkeeping of course and the bookkeeping shifts around a bit they kind of been moving it up and down over here on the left hand screen QuickBooks does that kind of stuff. They just do that. So you just got to get used to it. But so it's on the transactions in the bank transactions. So there it is. You can't fool me QuickBooks. I can still find it wherever you put the banking. So now we're in our, our checking account and we're going to be looking at some more complex bank rules. So now we're going to imagine a situation where we're, where we have like the same vendor, but we want to be breaking out the the uh, expense item in this case to two different accounts so this could happen like charitable organizations might have to do this from time to time because they might need to be be breaking out the categorizations for different reasons donations and whatnot and other businesses might do it because you might need to break out some of your expenses possibly by department or by location so those are some ways that that might happen now when you when you break out an expense to you could break it out to two separate accounts that are in two different departments possibly under a parent account using a sub account situation or you can use the class tracking we took a look at the class tracking last time let's look at both of those options to do so let's right click on the tab up top and duplicate it again i'm going to pull that to the left and you can turn on your class uh, tracking by going to the cog up top and then accounting. And then you go down to the advanced area. This is advanced stuff, people. Don't worry, it's not too complicated. We go into categories and then we turned on the class tracking. Class tracking and location tracking, similar, except tra class tracking usually gives you a little bit more flexibility because you can have multiple different classes assigned to the same transaction. Location tracking usually assigns each transaction to one location so in this case we kind of need the class tracking because we're going to have possibly different classes as we break out one expense account to multiple locations or multiple departments for example 
uh, I'm going to I'm going to say, OK, let's save that and done. So the class tracking has been set and is in place. Now let's go to the chart of the accounts, go to the accounting on down below. And this is our chart of accounts up top. If you're in the business view, by the way, where's the chart of accounts? It's under the bookkeeping again. And then we're under the chart of the accounts, chart of accounts. There's no the, there's no the, I don't see a the there. It's just chart of accounts, chart of the accounts. I don't know. Close up the ham boogie. So now I'm going to pretend that there's an expense account. So let's just call it like a test, a test expense account, just to make it distinguishing it. So I'm going to say new, I'm going to make a parent account. So I'm going to make it an expense account. And then I'm going to say it's like a normal expense. And then I don't really care about the sub account here. So maybe I'll just make it like insurance or other business. Let's do that. I'm just going to make it a test expense account for generic generic and unpredictable yeah. purposes sake and for goodness sake for generic purposes sake and goodness sake let's save it and then i'm gonna go do it again ultra base new expense boom and this time i'm gonna make it a sub account of that test expense account and i'm gonna give it the same name but then i'm gonna say location one so you could just call it location one because it will be a sub account but i like to repeat the name is what i that's what i like to do that's how it's going to show up down in the g to the l to the to the chart of the accounts in the financial to the statements let's do it again we're going to do it again new expense and this time we want a sub account again location two this time location numero dos location two so there we have it that's what it's going to look like so if i scroll down scrolling on down rolling 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 to expenses raw hide so there they are all right so now let's add these into our i'm just going to go to this one and i'm going to i'm going to break it out and pretend that we need to break it out by the two locations this one expense being broken out to the two departments or two locations which we will do two different ways by account and by class so we're going to say this is daily market i just made this up and misspelled it but i'll keep that we're pulling that just like we would normally i'm pop from the and then i'm going to categorize this but see what i want to do here is i'm going to say now i've got these two accounts so i could go here and then say but i need a split i need to split it between the two so right because this is a 75 dollars one if i pull out the trustee calculator for some trustee calculation let's say it was a 60 40 split that we have to break out between uh the two locations location so we could say then we could do the class location one no customer amount is going to be 75 total times 0.6 that would be a 45 breakout here. And then the second one is going to be location two. And then location two in the class. These two, you might not always break it out by account and class. You can do either or. These are two different options of using the split format. Uh, and you could use both of them as like a double check, which we'll see in a second. And the other side was 40. So I could take the 75 times 40 boom uh wait a sec hold on 75 times 0.4 there or i could of course take the 75 minus the 45 and that leaves me the, with the 30 that is going to this one so 30 there's the split so this would be decrease in the checking 75 and then go into location one of that expense account location two of that expense account to even things out so let's go ahead and apply that uh, uh, so now I, I recorded it out. I wanted to make a rule with it though. So let's do it. Let's do another one. I'm going to go into here. Same kind of thing. So that's the split when you're in, when you're in the actual transaction. What I'm going to do now is basically make a rule based on that split. So I'm going to say, create a rule and I'm going to say, it's going to be market money out rule. 
all conditions are met description i'm going to say bank text and then i'm going to pull the bank test text from the memo information which is basically the vendor that i'm going to pull out test the rule five are, are applied that looks good expense and then the key is here's the split here's that split so i'm going to say let's split this thing let's split it up and so then i'm going to go uh we've got the percent so let's do us we could do a percent split or a dollar amount split now oftentimes you would think you would want the percent split because if you're doing this kind of method and applying it out you'd probably do be doing like a 60 40 split for all of them to allocate the expense between departments instead of a dollar amount split but sometimes you might think well maybe you're always going to allocate like a set dollar amount a thousand dollars to one and everything above that goes to the other one because the thousand dollars is the cap of what you need in one department and the other department maybe fluctuates for whatever reason but i would think that most of the time you would do a percent split and let's do a 60 percent which is going to go to the category the account location one test account and i'll do the class again you might not always do both the category and the class but we want to practice both of them so i'm going to put this to class number one if you don't have a class you can add the class and just type in location number one adding the class on the fly meaning as we're going on the flies back you're doing it right on the flies back on the fly which is difficult because you have to have really good eyes to be working at that minute level on the fly so i'm going to say this one and this is going to be location two same thing location two so we're splitting at 60 40 if you wanted to split into another location you can obviously add another location and split it another way so you can have a three-way split but i'm not doing that so i have to trash it if you have anything that doesn't have anything in it down here then it won't let you record it so i'm going to trash it good and there we go so let's save it and the rule has been applied let's sort by the rule recognize is 11 11 have been recognized you better recognize that's what i'm talking about so let's go into this one i'm going to hold down shift and go down to here and let's add it hopefully and see if everything has been done the way it should be done that's my way that's the right way my way that's how it needs to be done okay okay calm down so the check the checking account the checking account goes down we know that let's go to the other side the the income statement so and here expenses we've got our test account down below that we were working with here it is and i messed it up didn't i because i put them both into the location two let me look at the classes i'm going to right click over here and duplicate I'm going to run the same report by class now, an income statement by class. And let's go to the reports. Report. On the left-hand side, I'm going to type in profit and loss by class. Profit and loss by class. And let's change the range. 010122 tab, 123122 tab. Running to refreshing, closing the hamburger. And then in... If notice that if I hit the drop down, this is just an income statement broken out by class. This class tracking only being there if you have class tracking turned on. In other words, you could convert your other income statement to an income statement by class by selecting this drop down and breaking it out not by date, not by month, not by day, not by quarter, not by year, but by class. But we want another report so we can see the two. So now we've got location one, location two. The not specified, not specified are the ones that we have not applied to a class. I would recommend that you don't really want a not specified as a designated area for external reporting. Although you could do that, you would want to have everything assigned to a class. I would think if class tracking is turned on so that if anything is not assigned to a class, you can drill down on the items not specified, not classified. And then every item should now have a class field allowing you to assign it to a class so that'll allow you to fix the problem which is quite nice because then you can kind of clean everything up uh, if there's anything unclassified now down here we put it into uh, these items so if i so let's take a look at it 
Something looks really strange, so let's go into it and see where I messed up. Where, where was my purposeful mistake that I made this time that I can show how to go in and fix it. So if I go in here, I made, I'm going to make this one a lot larger so I can see the two locations. Notice that this one I put into a test customer income account because I've made these two test accounts and I've misallocated the account. So this one shouldn't be income account. This should be an, ex an, an expense account, the test expense account. That's what you get for these generic names. Why can't you get more creative test expense account? So I'm going to say test expense account. This one should be location number one, test expense account location one. So I'm going to save it and close it. And let's do that for all of these. And just once again, just to show you that if you mess up test expense account location one, it's not the end of the world because then you're going to check your numbers after you record it so that you can, uh, you can go back into it and make any adjustments that need to be made. So that's going to go into the test expense account. This one has gone into the test expense account. I'm going to say test expense account location one, saving it and closing it. And then this one should go into the test expense account. So I'm going to go in there and test expense account. It should be test expense account location one and so on and so forth. So just, you know, I did that purposeful little mistake just to, just to show you that when people that aren't quite as infallible as I am with the data input, do the data input inevitably, some people make mistakes. Mistakes. And so I want to just, even though I don't make mistakes, I just wanted to show like if, you know, that that kind of happens, you can fix it, no worries. So in any case, if I, if I make this, I collapse it now, then of course I can see the two accounts here. Now we've done this kind of redundantly the way we did it because you might not do both two accounts and two locations by class. You could do either one. Uh, there's pros and cons to either one. If you do the two accounts, then you got the two accounts that you can go, fi go for. You don't have to deal with the added classes, but of course you end up with a quite long income statement and you don't get this nice breakout of like a net income calculation for both locations. If you do the locations, then it's a little bit more tricky because you have to make sure that you add the classes every time and it's a little bit more work because you need to add the classes, but it's not too bad because you can always, if you don't add a class, go in and adjust it as we saw. And if you do both, you could do both because then it gives you kind of a double check, meaning if something's in like location one here, but it's down here in location two on the account, you can say, okay, something got messed up there and, and then you can figure out what the problem is. So that kind of gives you a double check. It's a kind of an overkill, but it gives you like a double check. So those are just some options that you can use with the class tracking. Now, if the, if the, if the rule was wrong, I'm, which it is, I can go back to the tab over here, check out my rules and say, dude, what were you thinking with your rules, man? Why? And so you need to go and you need to fix that because that's going to mess everything up going forward. So then here, I'm going to say this shouldn't be test customer. This should be test expense. And then you could fix the rules going forward. That will not fix it retroactively because you already applied the rules to the ones that already that have already been done. These are going to fix the rules going forward. So just to note on that. So that is uh, the splits rule.